We sort of wanted to make a documentary about a famous sporting character and Rob had done it before with the ice skating. We'd had an idea a long time ago about a famous downhill skier that Rob was in the late 60s and I tried to think what was the golden age of sport, who was a hero, who looked good, who was sexy and sort of came up with the idea of doing it, a Grand Prix champion from the late 60s of that sort of James Hunt, Jackie Stewart sort of ilk and Graham Hill when they sort of went out partying every night and painted the town red after a race and I think w what with the cars and the helmets and everything and the, the whole look I thought it was really right for Rob to become Bob Williams 1969 sort of world champion or didn't quite make it world champion Formula 1 driver. And what I wanted to do was find real footage and insert all the shots of Bob that we were going to shoot into a real story so you sort of believed what you were watching it was sort of Forrest Gump type affair. So we made up a rough edit of like the whole year's uh, season which had a lot of Jackie Stewart in there. And then I thought, well, why don't we do like Bob versus Jackie sort of story? Yeah. Sort of wanted to invent a character that was a bit of a playboy, and it was sort of like an English real hero when they drove by the seat of their pants. And so you know, they'd come out of the race, they'd be a bit charged up, and it was all pit girls and excitement. But at the same time, we wanted to give it a sort of sophistication of a sort of middle-class English fighter pilot. So we came up with the idea with the pipe, uh, just to get a character in his head of that English gentleman that wasn't very gentlemanly and just sort of recreate that one year of madness or one year of romance and then enhance that with the newspaper footage like he gets arrested with the judge's wife who's a bit of a Casanova he was like faster off the track than on the track and that sort of thing basically build this character called Bob <laughs> Yeah, when we looked at the stock footage, like, a lot of the guys looked really heroic, and it was all, when you watched them on the starting grid, it was all eyes and that thousand-yard stare. And it was, like, quite sexy and quite valiant, the way they just sort of sat in these little bits of sort of biscuit tins with a giant engine on the back. And so that was the whole idea, the way it started like that. I just thought Rob would look really brilliant if he just sort of had his eyes in that sort of old-style sort of crash helmet looking visor and we could just sort of do a little few reactions and sideways looks. We looked at the uh, film Grand Prix and Thomas Crown Affair and um, uh, Le Mans and they seemed to really um, get across in a short time span all the different scenes to set up the crowd, the, the anticipation, the excitement. So we used that effect, split screen to move in boxes and I think one, it sort of encompasses that time period and that sort of fashion, and two, you can get across a lot of uh, atmospheric shots, build up crowd and people cheering very quickly. We wanted to sort of recreate the whole season, which would go from like rainy England through to sort of sunny climates and periods. So within a day, we sort of have one set that we were constantly dressing and relighting. And, and as it happened, we were really lucky because the first hour of the shoot, it really it was brilliant sunshine. And then it went stormy, and then we had a bit of cloud. So we had a lot of help from the Lord up there. I'm kind of used to being in cold. Should I walk naked? Should I be my soul? Won't you help me fill this hole? What I'm trying to say is be the one. Love me anyway Though I'm too far gone I'm riddled with my past Is that so much to ask? I wrote that song all the way up to there and then Guy wrote the other two chords to that song and I don't know what they are I really don't. We thought we'd invent like a pit crew for Robbie, like a manager, a girl in every race circuit. We went through all the stock footage, gave it to uh, the casting director to match all those, the different faces in that time. And it was uh, in the late 60s, everybody seemed to be much more pointed. And so um, that was the brief to match as close as we could. So when you had the stock footage, 
it suddenly cut and everybody was a completely different look and a now look, it wouldn't have worked. So we tried to find people who look more like they've lived in the past than the future. When we looked at stock footage, there were so many, um, you know, hoardings and advertisements in there. And so we decided just to sort of change Goodyear. We thought if he was doing really well, we'd call it Bob's year. And then we thought it'd be really good if he had his own little garage up north and they like made pistons for engines. So we thought we'd call it William's Pistons. And then just little things like we pump harder and things like that. We had Graham Hills winning Lotus, but the guy who brought the car down, when he saw all the stickers that we'd made up of all the printouts, of all the stock footage, he was in about half the footage, which was quite interesting. And then we put him in a cameo, and if you look closely, here's the man, you can see his profile just as Robbie looks out. What we did, we had this rig built, which was what they call a rolling road. So you, you put the car on the rig, all these rubbers turn, it turns the wheels around, and he can sort of steer it roughly. Then we put that in front of a large green screen with another car behind it, which was on a rail. So it could actually look like there's another car jousting for position behind Rob's. And we've got background footage that was actually shot in the late 60s for that thing when they actually used back projection. We wanted to put a crash in the instrumental because I think it was like a really dramatic part with the strings and it was quite cinematic. And when we were looking at footage, we didn't want to use anybody who really had a crash, who burnt, who got injured, because I think it's, it's a very fine line that you walk with, with people's real lives. So we recreated the car burning, just set fires around it with uh, burning gas pipes and things like that, so we didn't actually burn the real car. And then shot it through a bit of wire meshing, which enhanced the fact that they were running from the pits and get it quite shaky and out of focus. The crowds are running and you think he's dead and then there's a little um, epitaph for him and then he comes back to life in a neck brace. And it's the Bob we love him there. I think I've, I think I've broken my neck. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd know about it, wouldn't I, if I've broken my neck? What we wanted to do, instead of just cutting away to single shots of Robbie with cups and Robbie driving and that, we did actually work. We found footage where there was a gap, like Jackie Stewart's on the podium, he's won, and we found a, just a natural gap beside him. We should then just shoot Robbie green screen and insert Robbie in holding a cup as well. He's going at the end of the shot. There's three of them there, Robbie's the fourth one. That is our original shot. What we end up doing is taking the shot of Robbie and putting it through all sorts of bits of software and little tricks to make him look right. And the first thing we do would be to put some colour correction on that. It then goes through some softening. It then has some film grain added, which is quite subtle. It's then resharpened. That then gave us something that was pretty good. Um, it also involved some hand matting or drawing of, of mats around Jackie's arm so that Robbie sat behind him and obviously behind all these people in the foreground. And when we see the whole shot, I think you'll think it is quite convincing. I wanted to sort of make something, and I think Rob did as well, that was just sort of quite, not anti or anything stupid like that, but just make it so you were watching almost like a BBC Two documentary in the late 60s when they did those things on like the family and quite fly on the wall. So we deliberately tried to keep it quite raw and un, sort of slick. So when people watched it, they believed they were watching more of a documentary about um, Jackie Stewart and this other character. It's quite good because we sort of work together but don't talk much, so you sort of invent somebody or invent an idea, whether it be James Bond or uh, a glam rock star, and you just give Rob all these little teasers or toys to play with and he just somehow goes into the whole role amazingly and creates it with you as you work, so it's not like long discussions up on like planning and things like that, it's more like, what do you think about this pipe, you know, do you want to give it a bit of hef or something like that? And he just Picks it up straight away. Right, you're after this one, Rob, so we're going to give it a bit of the old magic. Through it. Tell the manager he's shagging his bird, all right, ready? And action. You go in with an idea, it's all plotted out, but you're not quite sure how it's going to turn up. So I think you just have to let, let Rob do what Rob does best, and he goes for it. <laughs>